Today on Monkey Life. Worries for woolly monkey Oriana. That looks like sort of quite a big left atrium. That's usually suggestive that there is significant heart disease. A bust up among the chimps. And Anya's definitely got something on his hand and he had blood in his mouth as well, though I don't really know whether it's his blood or someone else's. And top of the world, the Gwenon family try out a new tree in their enclosure. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. Hopefully she'll walk in as well as he did, so this would be fantastic. Fingers crossed. The park provides a home for more than 260 primates from 25 different species. It's been two and a half months since woolly monkey Oriana had to have an emergency caesarean section. It was a traumatic and sad day for everyone. Oriana survived the ordeal, but sadly, her baby did not. During the procedure, the team grew concerned as they discovered a number of worrying issues. It was hard to determine if they were purely pregnancy related or if the woolly monkey had other underlying health problems. Oriana needed time to recover from the C-section and anaesthetic before any further investigations could take place. Now, the vet team have decided to take another look at her. We had a situation where she had fluid around her heart, she had fluid around her lungs, she had fluid in her, her tummy, she was very late pregnant. Uh, she was a very, very sick animal. And, and the question is, has Oriana got pre-existing high blood pressure, which is the strong suspicion? It is just a, a case of looking for as much supportive evidence as you can, as well as trying to get a rough idea of what the blood pressure is. Oriana isn't the only female woolly the vet team will examine today. Her half-sister, Olivia, who lives in Laval's troop, is pregnant. The team want to make sure she isn't suffering from the same conditions experienced by her sister. But first up is Oriana, who's been sedated in her house and brought over to the park's hospital. Happy? Yep. <laughs> the team need to work quickly. Wildlife vet and anaesthetist Nick Masters intubates her while concerned staff watch on. OK, that is now in. Sounds good. Good girl, good girl. Once Ariana is stable, local vet Dave Harding prepares to perform an ultrasound to check her heart. Light on, that's great. OK. Straight away, he spots something abnormal. So it looks like sort of quite a big left atrium. That's usually suggestive that there is significant heart disease. Nick monitors Ariana's blood pressure throughout. According to this, She's 87 over 36. No effusion, Dave. Certainly no, no nothing, no, nothing major, grossly just... obvious, yeah. There's no sign of the pericardial effusion or fluid around the heart the female woolly suffered during pregnancy. But her blood pressure isn't what they expected. Actually, her pressures are low, if anything. Um, and in the past, I've done this on woolly monkeys, even under anaesthesia, their pressures are really high, so something slightly different going on here. So what's your plan, Dave? I'm just checking that all the fluid's gone and I'm just trying to get some measurements of her kidney size and her kidney appearance, just for reference, really. Dave completes his ultrasound checks. Next, the vet team want to take a series of x-rays of Oriana's chest, which they will compare later with her sisters. Once they're complete, Nick begins to bring Oriana round. As he does, her blood pressure rises dramatically. 177 over 112. It could be affected by the anaesthesia. Nick tries to get a more accurate reading. 
193. 193 over 100. Okay, yeah, yeah, stop. I think we'll put it back now. Yeah. Okay. It's definitely above what we think is normal. So there is, uh, we're sure, a cardiovascular blood pressure problem going on for her, which would have contributed to the problems with pregnancy. It's a huge worry. But today's examination has provided a lot of useful information about Oriana's condition. Two of her heart chambers, her, what are called her right and left atrium, are enlarged. And that suggests that she has got some significant heart disease um, and will probably be something that we'll need to manage going forward. Oriana recovers in her travel crate, ready to be returned to the house. Her half-sister, Olivia, is next on the vet team's list. And her health check could provide vital comparisons for the team on how to treat this complex species. It's been a busy few months for the park's Gibbon team. This morning, Kat and Sean are preparing breakfast for the 10 residents who live here. The Gibbons' living arrangements have had a radical reshuffle recently, following the loss of elderly La Gibbon, Ella. It's brought about some unusual pairings. Currently, out of the 18 gibbons that we have, most of them are in really nice pairs, um, but we have got a few single animals. So obviously, we don't really want anybody to have to live on their own if we can find a suitable companion for them. So we thought maybe Kitty and Teal might work out together. Um, we also thought maybe Paul and Fox, although both boys, um, they are very similar in nature. So we decided to split Paul and Kitty up for a, a short period of time and start doing some introductions between the other two sets and see what actually happens, um, which kind of leads us up to where we are at the moment. Mixed pairing, Tio and Kitty have been getting to know each other indoors over the last two months. Kitty is a La Gibbon who came to the park in 2001 from the Ping Tung Rescue Center in Taiwan. Golden-cheeked gibbon Tio was born at the park to parents Peanut and Peng Yo. The introductions indoors have progressed well, but now it's time to go a step further and allow the pair access to the outside together. Let them burn off some energy. Let them just be, you know, in the house, outside the house, moving around, eating, going about their business and see what happens. Um, we are also doing introductions between Fox and Paul as well. So quite a lot going on. At the moment, we never say anything's a done deal because anything can change at any moment in time, but finger crossed it's gonna be all right. With the pair playing happily indoors, Sean opens the slide to the outdoor enclosure. Tio loves the outdoors and heads straight out. Kitty follows at a more sedate pace. Tio is 11 years old and a happy and independent young adult. He's had a wonderful upbringing with a stable family and a fabulous tree-filled enclosure for a home. In terms of behavior, he's a more natural gibbon who knows gibbon etiquette and conduct. Kitty, on the other hand, was hand-reared, making her a bit more human-focused. But the partnership is already showing positive signs. It's been really nice. Kitty hasn't been out as much as we would have hoped. Um, when Kitty has approached Tio, it's been absolutely amazing. Um, he's been doing little spins and flips just to display and show how um, just fun and active he is. Um, and they've had some really nice just cuddles on the platform. Um, and yeah, just really patient with each other. So it's a really good start to the day. The team will give the pair continued indoor and outdoor access and monitor how their relationship develops. But the signs are good for an unusual but happy partnership. It's a busy day for the Woolly Monkey team. Female Oriana has been returned to her house and is being monitored as she recovers from a health check under anaesthetic, while her five-year-old half-sister Olivia is en route for her examination. The team are confident she's pregnant, but less sure about when she's due to give birth. This will be her first baby. And concerned following her sister's experience, 
the care staff are determined to make sure Olivia's pregnancy runs smoothly. Bearing in mind that there, there possibly is some genetic issues with, with Woolies that's linked to their high blood pressure, we're just a bit worried that if she's pregnant, she may be going a similar way. So it, it would be better to try and uh, assess whether she is pregnant now uh, and then potentially we can try and do something about it to try and sustain the pregnancy. A quick inspection confirms the team's suspicions. Oh, yes. Yeah? I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Sharon, yeah. she is pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. While Nick intubates Olivia and makes sure she's stable, Dave prepares the ultrasound. OK. Yeah, all right. First, he examines the fetus. OK, that's Look fine. at that. How cool is that? Look at this little heart going. OK, so, head is down. That's a sort of head diameter. That's 20, yeah. 29, 30, it's three centimetres, pretty much. Yeah. Halfway through. It's good news. Olivia's baby is healthy and developing well. She's more than halfway through her pregnancy. Dave moves on to checking Olivia's heart. You see that, Nick? Uh, that's the aorta yeah. and that's the left atrium there. Yeah. You see the difference? What a difference, yeah. All right. Looks like no pericardial... There's no pericardial there. effusion, yeah. Olivia is not displaying any of the symptoms that affected Oriana so traumatically. So, we're going to try and get some blood pressure measurements for comparison to... Oriana's a half-sister, is that right? Yeah, they share yeah. a father. Nick wants blood pressure readings he can use to compare with Oriana's stats during anaesthesia. There you go, so she's down at 74 over 28. It's low, much lower than we would expect if she was wide awake. Um, don't have enough knowledge to know how it compares, so it's, it's unusual for us to anaesthetise non-human primates with this combination of drugs, or even with the ones we would more usually use, and immediately measure their blood pressure. So, because they're a particular case, we're just making the effort to get our blood pressures on them straight away. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely low. Dave checks the rest of the Woolies' vital organs. That's the only thing obvious that uh, I was to look at. Yeah, no, that's good. Olivia appears in good health. The baby looks fine. Um, heart seems pretty stable. Um, it's in a good position. Um, seems to be... Uh, relatively well developed. Her head is about 31 millimetres in diameter. So we're, we're, you know, sort of three quarters of the way, probably, as a, as a, as a, as a rough estimate. The team takes some chest X-rays to compare with Oriana's. That heart looks more, looks more normal. Well, it looks, I mean, if you compare the two. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And there's none that, of this. You compare that yeah, yeah, yeah. to that. Yeah, you know, there's, there's more of a left atrial yeah. waste there, called yep. cardiac waste. Wow, that's, that's excellent to have. What a difference. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, really yeah. good. A final blood pressure reading just before she comes round. 117. So, it's not doing what Rihanna did. It's a lower and more normal reading than her half-sister, which is great news for Olivia, but raises concerns for Oriana. Olivia appears to be a fit and healthy expectant mum. The park covers 65 acres of grounds, including the primate houses and enclosures. It all needs looking after, and that's the job of the maintenance team. The work is continuous, and there's always something new for them to tackle. Today, they're digging up an ash tree growing directly under a series of electrical cables. In the past, they've regularly cut it back to keep it under control, but now they've decided to uproot the entire thing and move it. It's on its way to the home of the park's red-bellied Gwenon family. This happy, lively foursome love life in the trees. But they also like eating them, which involves stripping the bark and eating any new buds. Their incredible agility makes it difficult for the primate care team to develop the whole enclosure. 
Open top enclosures are lovely, but you are restricted by the amount of space. Everything kind of has to stay in the middle of the enclosure, not too much towards the outside. So if you run the risk of them bouncing and leaping over the outskirts. So we would actually quite like to put a cage or a roof over this enclosure. That means we can utilize all areas of the enclosure and you know move it away from kind of like the central area that we do have, plant some more trees around you know, the enclosure as well, and then maybe add some more ropes or hosing or something to help uh, increase their space and increase their en enclosure space by giving them more opportunities. But as that may not happen for some time, the teams have taken care deciding where to plant the new acquisition. Now it's in place and well watered, time to see what the family of four will make of it. They don't hang around, heading straight for the new tree. Nothing quite beats natural planting for many of the primates at the park. It helps develop and encourage natural behaviours, something this group demonstrate in abundance. Red-bellied guenons come from the forests of Nigeria and Benin and spend most of their lives in the trees. Parents Nia and Benny arrived at the park via the Lebanon three years ago. They're actually um, smuggled out of the wild, so they've got, you know, very strong wild instincts and they like to test, you know, their abilities and how springy they are. The two youngsters, uh, Nala and Biff, are just typical kids, bounce all around the place. So it's really nice being able to put live trees into the enclosures because it helps um, encourage all those natural behaviours of climbing trees and eating off the buds. Um, but you do run the risk of those trees being killed because of the amount they're being used by the Gwenons. Benny and Nia's female offspring are the liveliest pair at the park. Their agility and confidence has no limits. They can both leap huge distances and climb to the top of the tallest tree with ease. It's their playground and they love to have fun together. All four family members find their feet quickly, moving between the new tree and the others in their enclosure as the care team keep an eye on their antics. It's not long before the family decide to test it out further not just moving around, but tasting some of the new fresh buds, which contain sugar, fibre and carbs. It doesn't matter how flimsy and bendy the branches are, or how high off the ground, their ability to reach the tasty buds at the end is phenomenal. Time will tell how long the new tree will survive, but at the moment, it's certainly a hit with the Gwenon family. There's been a bit of a bust up at Hananya's chimp enclosure this morning. The care team didn't witness the altercation, just the results of it. Sean and vet nurse Saffron are taking a close look to make sure no one's been seriously injured. Hananya's definitely got something on his hand and he had blood in his mouth as well, but I don't really know whether it's his blood or someone else's. Yeah. Uh, Cherry looked like she had a split lip and another wound on her hand. Okay. Johnny had a cut on her head. OK, but no one looks like they're moving awkwardly or no, any sort no. of discomfort. They're just in the usual rounds. The troop are now busy licking their wounds or someone else's. This is the core of Chimp Society. Half of it is beating each other up, the other half is kissing and making up afterwards. So this is just basically pretty perfect chimp behaviour. We've had a big falling out, but we're still a family, so we groom each other and reaffirm all our relationships afterwards. Chimpanzees are volatile social animals and live in large groups with a strict hierarchy. At the pinnacle is the alpha male, whose duties include patrolling territory and dishing out discipline. This comes with various benefits, but can be stressful. Several male lieutenants back up the alpha male in a series of alliances. At Hananya's, Simon and Shemak fill that role. The females have their own hierarchy, maintained mainly through relationships and personality rather than aggression. Chimps enjoy close bonds, but fights do occur and can be noisy and violent. There have been grumblings at Hananya's recently, but the severity of this morning's clash was a surprise. 
You always hope during the nice sunny days that they're just going to spread out in the enclosure and sit back and relax in the sun. So it was always quite sad when you just like, oh, can you not just get on and just have, enjoy the sunshine? But like I said, chimps are going to be chimps every now and again. They're going to have these little squabbles. But uh, yeah, hopefully the rest of the day is just going to be everyone kissing the making up. That looks on the cards. Leader Hanania is surrounded by the rest of the troop, all wanting to reconcile and stay in his good books. They're also keen to look at the nasty wound he's collected. It seems today's scuffle may have been instigated by head girl Johnny. She's a large female, happy to throw her weight around. Johnny's in that weird place where, yeah, she seems to have gotten really high, purely just through brawn, so she doesn't really foster her relationships very much. That's how you get ahead in chimp society, with, you know, making good alliances and getting your friends to back you up, and Johnny doesn't have any of that at all. Strange that she's got as far as she has in this group. Just shows how good of a fighter is, really. Sean and Saffron want to get an even closer look at some of the chimp's wounds. Oh, yeah, that's a fair old trouble, that. Hanania's second-in-command, Simon, has a particularly nasty cut on his foot. You silly man. That looks sore. Yeah, he skinned it up the side. Yeah. So it's really sore. I don't think it's too deep. Sean calls the troop into their bedrooms in order to examine some of the cuts and grazes. Hanania! Cheers. Come on, let me have a look at you. Hey, buddy. Chimps have a high pain threshold and also heal quickly. Most of today's injuries should heal within a week. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. quite nasty, actually. Yeah. So what's that digit for? Yeah. Thankfully, these are all just flesh wounds, so Hanania's hand look quite, looks quite nasty, but I imagine it'll heal really nicely. Um, so it's more a case of just managing any discomfort and watching out for any signs of infection and then starting him on antibiotics if we do feel it's necessary. At the moment, when they're so fresh, they can often look worse than they actually are, and you'll find by tomorrow morning, once the wound's had time to dry and contract a little bit, they're often looking a lot better. Fights and arguments are all part of chimp life. It's the making up afterwards that's important, and this group are very good at that enjoying each other's company and having fun. Next time on Monkey Life. A disturbing video of a sick male marmoset results in an urgent rescue mission for Alison. The video clip gets heartbreaking and bring tears to my eyes. And the clever capuchins have a tricky, sticky puzzle licked.